We now stop off at Sink Farm in Holsley Bay, Suffolk, on the east coast of the UK, home to the Suffolk Punch Trust's historic colony stud. Here, Tracy Pettit spearheads efforts to safeguard the future of the heroic heavy horse that helped mould rural life across the counties. This breed itself has been one of the best breeds for me to really connect with, be able to work together as a team, to be able to achieve things together. It's like a partnership. I can't really explain how that happens, and I think it is just purely because they just give you that little bit more time to read them and to understand them. I worked in a private yard within hunting and racing, and there was a small collection of two Suffolk punches. So of course, that was my first introduction to their temperaments. So when you're dealing with the thoroughbreds, they're a completely different breed. The majority, they're very quick thinking. Um, they're much more of a nervous horse, more concerned about, you know, that they're gonna get eaten by the nearest tiger that's lurking behind the oak tree. Whereas the Suffolk, I'm not saying that they're not concerned about the possible tiger that could be lurking behind the oak tree, but they will just process what is worth running away from. They are a big, powerful horse. Their sheer size, their engine, their backside is quite remarkable, which allows them to push into their collar, which would be on their shoulders, to create the most amazing workhorse. The Suffolk Punch Trust is primarily to, to breed. We are a stud. We're to continue our breeding programme and to keep the colony line alive. We are here to promote the breed and the fact that it is critically endangered to try and help people to come forward and to support us and of course other breeders as well. On site we've got four stallions, we've got three seniors and one youngster. We've also got obviously very competent staff here that do not mind handling these beasts when their testosterone gets the better of them sometimes. They don't need a calendar pinned to the wall, they know exactly when the season changes and they know exactly when it is their time to shine. We've got our breeding mares here, we've got five at the moment um, that we can breed from. We've got obviously much, much younger fillies in the system which will eventually, hopefully, will come forward into our breeding programme as time goes on. But of course we're constantly looking for new blood. So this mare here, um, her name is Jolly, she's a first time mum and she is very proudly showing off her newborn son and he's only two days old. He's called Colony Joseph. We follow the alphabet, so this year is J. So all the foals born this year all have to begin with the letter J. So, so far we've got Jada, Jedediah, um, Jennifer and Joseph. <laughs> For me personally, to see a new arrival of a foal is really quite special. You know, that's the whole reason for why we're here. That is it in a nutshell. That's what all the hard work is about. That's our future. The trust isn't just about looking forward though. With the site now open to the public, visitors are privy to a purpose-built museum where co-founder Philip Ryder Davies can often be found reminiscing about the stud's 250-year history and the heritage of the UK's original working horse. This was the biggest stud which the prison had had since about 1939. They bought it from what was a charity training uh, the sons of the gentry to go and farm in the colonies. They'd run it until it was decided that they would get rid of the farm uh, and obviously the horses. At that point, about eight of us set up this charity, raised two million pounds, bought the farm. That was my first contact with them, really. But I was very taken with them because they are just magnificent. Colour being chestnut all the time, can't be any other colour with very small, small amounts of white on it. And it's this very particular body shape, which is like a huge body on short legs. Somebody decided to create a breed society. The first secretary of the society spent five years of his life tracing the breeding of every Suffolk horse that he could find. They all went back through generation to 1768 to one stallion, which was foaled in Ufford, a village about seven miles from here. They're such a part of Suffolk life. 
And the social history of Suffolk is largely round Suffolk horses because so many people are working on farms, you have to remember. So there's an awful lot of people in Suffolk now have relatives who spent their lives working with Suffolk's. I think what's so lovely about the trust in itself is the fact that, that it's not hustle and bustle. You've got such vast space, there is no noise. And I think that's actually what people really enjoy. It just gives them a chance to disconnect from that busy, busy, noisy life and come here and just relax, enjoy the countryside. And of course, these magnificent horses, having a chat with them over the fence. Five years ago, life took a very unexpected turn for me. The unthinkable happened. My dear oldest son, Ben, passed away totally unexpectedly. But I'm a great believer in healing animals, nature. So there was no better place for us to come now and again when we wanted just to chill a little bit and heal a little bit. I would walk up here and I called Aki and he came over to me. There wasn't another human being in sight. And I said to him, life's a bit rubbish, Aki. And he actually nodded at me. I stroked him. I had tears pouring down my face. And there was just something about being with this horse. Yes, he's beautiful, but it, it went within. This horse seemed to be giving me strength. I adopted him a few years back for a year, which is rather lovely because he sends you a photo and he sends you a letter. <laughs> and, it's, and his photo takes pride of place at mine. Saki is probably the star of the show for me, but I love everything about it. I've been following the other stallions. I've even been going to horse shows and the Suffolk show, watching them get all their wonderful rosettes and prizes. I've been lucky to see foals days old, and it's just, it's just lovely. Forging friendships with visitors is one thing, but Tracy is acutely aware that these hardworking horses need to evolve and is training them in skills that will help them remain relevant in modern day life. Obviously, it is important to breed these guys, um, but we must make sure that they've got a job at the end of it all. One of which is, as you can see, um, we're going to traditions and breaking them into harness. He's still incredibly novice when it comes to working in this particular cart. You know, he will come, there's no two ways about that. And at that point, he can go forward really to do any job when it comes to driving. He can be a leisure horse for people to enjoy. I think we've got to be very open-minded about the versatility of this breed. We, we, can, we cannot remain a closed book and say, well, you know, they worked on farms and they must only plough or, or pull a cart. Actually, no, that's, that's not true. People are actually now starting to ride these horses. This is, this is becoming quite a, a popular thing with the ridden heavy horse, not just the Suffolks. People are also working them within forestry as well. You know, much, much kinder to the ground and the, and the planet that we, we live in. To be able to work with those animals from the point of actually seeing them being delivered right through to them perhaps wearing their harness or pulling their first cart or um, having their first human on their back. It's just really special. This is all part of our history. You know, they were the ones that enabled us to put food on the table right at the beginning. When you talk to a lot of older generations, they remember working with these horses. That when people are talking about their history and their memories, you can see that there's real fondness in their eyes, they're reliving these moments. And of course, that's, that's remarkable in itself. So, you know, no, we most certainly cannot let this breed disappear from under our noses. You know, we, we must fight to help them continue. <laughs>